What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Now Kyle, this is uh this is an episode that's been about a year in the making. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'd say so. We got a very, very rare animal. It took us about eight months, uh, thanks to COVID and all the restrictions and not being able to import it just to get the, to the US. We've had it for about four months now, uh, and it's finally time to unveil it. So let's check it out. So this is actually an animal I've been really looking forward to unveiling to you guys, and that is this blue-eyed leucistic king cobra. And like I mentioned earlier, this video has been about a year in the making because we heard about this snake about a year ago, uh, and then we had the opportunity to purchase it. But unfortunately with COVID and all the travel restrictions, travel bans, and, and kind of everything that's been going on with the world, it took us about eight months to get this snake imported into the US and then for the last four months, we've just been making sure it's been healthy. So here, what we do for our quarantine process with all of our snakes uh, is they, they obviously they don't go into their main collection right away, especially a wild caught snake like this wild caught King Cobra. Uh, we put them into a separate room. We quarantine them. We do a fecal sample. We make sure they don't have any internal parasites. Then we visually make sure that they don't have any external parasites. And then we make sure they're eating. And we also test them for different viruses and such that their species or family and genus can carry. Uh, so this animal's made it through our entire quarantine process. From everything we've seen, it's very healthy. It's eating like a champ. And that's why we feel we feel very comfortable unveiling it now. And sh he or she, we haven't texted it yet, so we don't know what its uh, gender is, um, is obviously just checking me out. And it, if the you story goes with this one is, you know, we're looking to import uh albino water monitors t positive and t negative yeah from our buddy danny we weren't even looking at, at no. snakes and he stumbled upon this snake and you know we pressed the buy it now option yeah. essentially you know we couldn't we couldn't say no to an incredible animal like this but with covid you know it took forever to bring in because the flights kept getting canceled over and over and danny lives 18 hours from the airport so even just to plan that process was an ordeal so then Finally getting a flight and getting it here and then customs, um, you know. It's probably a 50 hour trip, to be honest. Yes. To get the snake from Danny's house to our house, 50 hours. And she came in understandably cranky. And you say she, again, we he, don't she, know if, if it's he, male or she, female. It. And the reason we do that, so uh, you guys have probably seen, if you're familiar with our channel, we have King COVID, which is our other King Cobra, which we ended up just sexing recently, uh, probing. And King COVID is Queen COVID. That is, it is a female. So now I'm like, all King Cobras are, that we touch are females. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't sexed this one yet. We're going to wait till it gets bigger. There's no rush on our side to sex it and figure out what it is. So we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, Danny, it, I mean, it was kind of everything kind of worked out for us besides COVID and taking us longer to get it. But Danny, we were talking to about water monitors. Yep. He's a water monitor guy. He's a lizard guy. This was the first snake he ever took care of, which... It's a big, big Luckily deal to take he care had a, of. A good friend of his that would come over, and she was more well versed with snakes and cobras in general. And the two of them did an amazing job. Yeah, they know. did. So after when this one came into us, basically we just had to hydrate it and get it some meals in it. And as you can see, it's got amazing body weight, nice, nice and uh, nice and thick, to be honest. Um, but also touch and on really calm. And, and touch on that, you know, like yeah. I said, she came in cranky. She was always hooded up. She would musk nonstop, you know, even just cleaning her cage and moving her from. You said you know, she like 15 why times. Do I say that? <laughs> what am I supposed to say? He, let's just call it. Uh, let's call it the Lucy. The Lucy. Okay, yeah. sure. So just moving it from the uh, in, the temporary quarantine enclosure to the um, the uh, bucket, you know, for cleaning, she'd musk, you know. So it's amazing how how she's come in such a short time. Yes, so when, when it came in, when uh, the Lucy came in, uh, it was very defensive. It had just traveled 50 hours. It really hasn't had that many interactions with humans, because uh, obviously we don't handle it all that often. Uh, and it was just defensive. It was scared, it was hooding, it would musk. And honestly, you could not touch this animal without it musking, hooding, or striking. Now, four months later, as you can see, it's very comfortable. It's just cruising on, on my arm, on the glove, of course. Uh, hasn't really hooded all that much, just on the move. It's not trying to do anything. It's not getting aggressive, defensive. It's, it's just like, what are we doing, guys? You never hold me. And that's another thing. 
we've been leaving this King Cobra alone. The only time that we've ever really handled it up until this point of showing you guys uh, is simply just when we take it out, put it in a bucket, clean its cage, give it some water, and uh, that's about it. That's the only times that it's been handled. Um, and that's what I really like to do with our snakes here is just short positive interactions to just kind of enforce with them that we are no threat to them. They don't need to worry about us and they're not gonna get hurt. Now, let me just touch on the leucistic kings for a second. So king cobras, for those of you that don't know, aren't actually true cobras. They're in the whole different genus called Ophiophagus, uh, which translates to snake eaters, uh, whereas true cobras are all nausea. So if you Google leucistic cobra, you will see a lot of different cobras. They will pop up. There's uh, mainly leucistic monocled cobras, and there's probably a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand here in the US, and those are pretty common. They get about five, maybe six feet long, um, but there are no king cobra. This is a, a true king cobra, which has the potential of getting, I mean, the Malaysians get 18 feet long. This is an Indonesian, which a male, maybe 15 foot, uh, would be like a big one, female, 10 to 13 foot. So this is gonna be a monster snake and it's gonna be pure white with blue eyes. And there are rumors of a few of them. So let's just touch on how rare they are. Cause like I said, there's a couple hundred to thousands of the monocolds as far as leucistic king cobras. Here in the US, there was one other one that unfortunately ended up passing away recently. Uh, so this is the only one to my knowledge in the US or maybe others floating around. Then uh, there's a big adult male breeding in Indonesia and making what we believe to be hets. That male is still alive. He's still breeding right now. There were, I believe, two other babies found with this one uh, the same year, which was last year. Uh, unfortunately, from what I'm hearing from my uh, connects in Indonesia, those died as well. So as far as what we ha we know confirmed, it's this one, uh, which if, you've, if you follow on Facebook and you've seen uh, in the King Cobra groups, this was Osiris. The name of it was Osiris online. Uh, there's this one that's alive and then that big male. I have heard rumors of leucistic kings from even back in the 80s in like Russia. So there probably are a few others floating around. There's definitely a lot of heads floating around, but as far as visual leucistics, there's probably only two uh, that we, like, again, two that we know if there may be others. Uh, but as far as captive bred leucistics, there are none. So as far as all the bigger leucistics, they're all wild caught like this one. It was a wild caught animal. Uh, so hopefully in the future, I mean, Kyle, the one thing that we want to do is simply raise this animal up, get it to full grown size, and then hopefully with any luck, we can get it breeding and produce some white king cobras here in the U.S. I mean, how incredible would that be? I mean, people would love to go to every zoo to see one of these, huh? Oh, like, yeah. a, like a 15 foot all white cobra. That's the thing is just a white snake with blue eyes is incredible enough. Now you're talking about the most, the largest venomous snake in the world being white with blue eyes yeah i mean how incredible guys let us know in the comments what you think of it uh and let's know about any names too we haven't come up with a name again we haven't probed it so we don't know if it's male or female but i guess maybe there's some cool names out there female too because lucy is lucy is like a girl name generally female yeah name, yeah, so. yeah I, I i could see that i i mean i keep calling it a girl too obviously I, i'm just trying for you guys so we don't confuse you <laughs> we love for it to be a male because obviously it'll get bigger males are bigger but you know we're we are just happy just to have this beautiful animal. Yeah. And as you can see, it's really not hooding that much, which again, I, trust me, it is a king cobra. It, it's not a corn snake, uh, but you can see it, it's really relaxing. And after this video, to be honest with you guys, we're not going to handle it again besides cleaning, um, cleaning it until it's probably a solid four to five foot. Mm -hmm. Really when the king cobras hit that four to six foot range is when they become pretty solid under that, they're still very fragile. This one right now is about three and a half foot. So it's getting close to that four foot. That's why I was comfortable showing it. It's had 12 plus meals. I think maybe closer to 15 meals since we've had it. Um, but this is also complete opposite behaviorally to when it first came in. Oh yeah, 100%. She was, he or it was always hooded up, always striking at us, mouth open, you know, very, very defensive. Um, and she's literally, like I said, complete opposite from when we got her. Yeah. and it's, it's focusing on that hook right now because right now it eats snakes. So if you, for those of you guys that don't know, king cobras are snake eaters in the wild. This one came in, uh, it tried to offer some rodents. It hasn't taken it. 
Uh, so right now I, I have it onto frozen thawed snakes. So the next step for me is try to get it onto rodents. But to be honest with you, I know I've talked to you about it. I wouldn't mind keeping it on snakes forever if, if we sure could have would. enough uh, supply of those snakes. They're hard <laughs> to come by now. So, and expensive. And expensive. So if you see me on my Instagram saying, uh, over the help last couple us, months, I'm looking for snakes, I'm looking for snakes. This is the animal all those snakes were for. So yeah. I think some of my followers are gonna get a kick out of that because we've been keeping this very under wraps. Very under yeah. wraps. But as you can see, this thing is beautiful. So I don't know, do you have anything else you want to say about it? I mean, I mean, look at her, you know, look at him. Why do I keep doing that? Look at the Lucy. Look at it, look at it. Yeah, but this thing is gorgeous. Yeah. But also too, I don't think we touched on the transparency of it. You know, you can actually see its heart. Its heart? Yeah, if you look by my middle finger, that black dot in there or black discoloration is moving to my thumb now. Uh, black discoloration, that's its heart. And, and you can actually see corn snakes. Yes, and that's the thing is, touch you, know, on that? it, it, you know, it's a shame to feed corn snakes because we love all snakes, but seeing the corn snake patterning through this thing's skin is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, so we are just beyond fortunate to have gotten this animal in. It's established very nicely. Uh, its behavior and disposition is dramatically improved, and this is a very handleable snake now. Now it's just time to watch it grow and, and see what kind of animal this turns into. I mean, it's gonna be fun. Like I said, as soon as we start handling more, when it hits that four to six foot range, we're gonna be posting a lot more videos of it. Uh, at this point, we just wanted to show you guys uh, take it out for a little bit of handling and as you can see we're not stressing it it's very very calm if it was hooded and trying to bite us and going crazy we wouldn't be making this video period we waited until the snake was ready yeah um which i think i think it is now so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we've enjoyed unveiling it this was one that i've been bugging kyle for the last <laughs> three weeks like hey let's film this video let's film the video it's, we're ready we're ready we took we did a video what yesterday yesterday i didn't like usually it. the guy that's like ah it's fine it's fine post it he called me late last night. No good. No good. So. Yeah. This animal again. deserves a good video. You, oh, and even this one, I don't know if I'm no, going to love come it. Come on. This is the last one. <laughs> but this is what, this is what we get. Paste. Um, but like, this animal is, is amazing. I've, I've enjoyed working with this and getting it established. This is the second baby King Cobra I've raised uh, in the last two years. It, we've, we've been pretty active. And um, King Covid was smaller than this one. Yeah, King Covid was a little smaller than this one. And, and now... How about, you wanna put this away and show up big King Cobra's getting? Yeah, why not? That way we can show you guys what a King Cobra gets and even ours isn't full grown yet. It's only about two years old. So let's go to the, grab her out. Cool. Well, this is King Cobra. For those of you that are familiar with our channel, you have known we've had this animal for, I don't know, about approaching two years now. Um, this is a Indonesian Malaysian cross. So those are two different localities that get substantially different sizes. So like we just showed you with the Lusisic, that is an Indonesian King and, um, which again, those would get typically 13 to maybe 15 foot, for like a big one, whereas the Malaysians get 15 to 18 foot for a male. Uh, so this being a cross and a female, uh, I probably think she's gonna get anywhere from 10 to 12 feet long. Uh, she's roughly eight, she's, seven, eight. She's just over eight, maybe almost okay. eight and a half foot now. Um, and thickening up. One thing with King Cobras too is they, they get really long and then they thicken up it with age. And this one's only two and a half right now. And like I said, when we first got her, she was smaller than that Lucy. But this way you can see kind of what a, where you guys can see what a King Cobra is. Uh, it's not a small little snake. These are gigantic venomous snakes. Uh, and like I said, they're not true Cobras, but when they get to full grown, a full grown 18 foot male Malaysian King Cobra will hood up and look you in the eye basically they look a six foot man in the eye they hood up probably five to six foot queen covid uh hooded up one time for us really good and she was probably two feet off the ground so they, they definitely have the potential to get there and as you can see she's barely hooding up the only time she hoods up is when she sees the camera she's like what is that uh and yeah. she's very easy to handle and if you can see the way kyle's handling is he's not having the hook there when king cobras get larger they are rather difficult to hook and tail. So it's better to kind of pick up these uh, skills and have the snake used to you handling it the way Kyle is, just for when it is 15 foot long or however long it gets and about as thick around as my forearm. Uh, it's relatively easy to handle. This is a very calm snake. And as you can see as well, when Kyle's holding the tail, all he's basically doing is keeping her in the same spot. She's 
cruising and investigating. She has no cares about Kyle holding her or anything. Yeah, all you can see is I'm just putting resistance. I'm not even like grabbing and pulling. I'm just kind of giving a little bit of resistance for when she tries to pull away. And you're watching her body language too. Yep. We've had this animal since it was little, since it was smaller than the Lucy and we've raised it up. So we, we're familiar with the animal. This isn't just a random one we went and grabbed. So don't do this at home. Don't do this with a random King Cobra. Also, we also understand the body language of the snake. Like Kyle's keeping the whole body of Queen Co or King Cobra, however you want to call her, on the ground, which is making it to where she wants to explore and stay on the ground. If he mm -hmm. started lifting her up, she would turn back on him. That So it's just understanding. So when he does that, he has a hook and he's holding the, the front of her body with the hook and the ta uh, tail in his hand because she's going to turn around and at least the hook's in the way where yeah. rather than just picking her body up, she's going to come and you have no no line of defense. So We're keeping her head far away from us, you know, so we have plenty of time that if she does turn towards us to be defensive, we have the hook right here and we have a good five feet from us to her head. And what do you think, Kyle, of uh, handling king covid or handling any of the snakes because obviously like you guys know and i know you mentioned earlier kyle's the crocodile guy i'm the snake guy and over the last two years of me living here we've swapped information basically i've been teaching him and mentoring him with snakes he's been teaching me and mentoring me with crocodiles so we've we've each picked up a little bit from each other as well as having the the youtube channel well, we stuff, can even so. share that you know you're getting your crocodile permit and i'm getting my venomous permit yeah guys we're we're uh we're officially ready to submit our permits yep uh so yeah i'll, I'll be getting my class one and two and he'll begin his venomous uh snake or venomous reptile permit here in the next i don't know we're Soon, begin yeah, of the who, year. Who I don't knows? know. I don't know the date. The, I know Tallahassee's backed up, so whenever they said right. submit it. But we both have all of our hours. We both have all, everything we need. So now it's about time to get it. Which is a big reason of why I moved to Florida was I wanted to work with these animals and get my crocodile hours. And a big reason why you wanted me here as well, besides just being friends, mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to get your venomous. Yeah. So it really worked out for both of us. I mean, this is a an absolute ideal situation, you know, for me. You know your experience with all these venomous snakes we have um, this beautiful area for the snakes to really work with them have plenty of space if we're if we're uh, being cautious overly cautious you know really um, what's the word um, enough room to maneuver the snake and not yeah. get backed into a corner yeah because for those of you guys who don't know let's touch on it because i imagine the lucy king is going to bring a lot more people to this video the room we're in is actually our uh secondary containment so in the state of florida you cannot take non-native venomous snakes outside of your uh venomous snake room and just handle them outside you can't do it so this yeah. room is uh escape proof and it's also been approved by fwc it's been inspected everything which allows us to i mean we're the only ones in the state of florida that can take a non-native venomous snake out out in natural sunlight natural air and get pictures or videos, mm -hmm. so that's why we're able to do this. Typically, this is illegal now in the state of Florida to take something outside. Yeah, and pretty much what it was is uh, we talked about it and I said, okay, let me know the laws that say your restrictions and we will find a way to have them outside. And that's exactly yeah. what we did. So FWC is happy, we're happy because we can have these animals out here. Again, having this amazing giant workable space to learn these animals because they are dangerous animals. Yes. So to have the plenty of space to really work with them and learn them and see their body language, because to have a space like this, you know, is so crucial to really see their body language overall. Well, I mean, anything you want to say, Kyle, before we um, wrap up this video, as far as uh, the Lucy King COVID stuff yeah, you're going to be unveiling. I mean, we got, we got crazy stuff. I know we unveiled the Lucy King, which was a big unveil in the snake world. Kyle's got something cooking with the croc world too. Yes. So. <laughs> I know you you posted a little hint about it earlier. A little hint about it. You so. follow him on Instagram. You're like, there's, there's something up there that it, it indicated. We got some pretty incredible animals here at the sanctuary, and you know who knows what the future holds, but uh, it's looking pretty good. It's yeah, looking and, pretty good. And we are still looking to be open to for private tours here this summer. Yes. So yes, by summertime, you guys should be able to come visit us, get a tour. You're going to see the snakes. You're going to see the crocodiles. I don't know if the Lucy's gonna be on display or any not or not. We'll see. We'll play that by ear. But Kyle's crocodile projects, those will be on display, mm -hmm. and th that video will be coming soon. All right, guys. Well, if you like today's video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know in the comment section what you think about King COVID or the Lucy King. Maybe let us know some names. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.